Hello. So in the last video, I gave you my interpretation of what the tetragrammaton means, this, this, these four letters that are phonetically pronounced Yahweh. Uh, and I, I explained how I think that the, the Hebrew ambivalence on what the tetragrammaton means actually indicates what it means. Um, and that the statement God is one, Yahweh Echad, is is one of the most profound and difficult things to understand. Um, you know, I don't think it can be understood. I think it can only be experienced. And so we talked about that and how the Shema hints at this: Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. But that hinting at it doesn't is is kind of difficult to 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 experience it. It's just six words. And, and so what comes after those six words is the Biahafta, and that's, that's where a little bit more instruction comes. So I'm going to read to you the Biahafta in English now. It's written up here, right? and it says, And you shall love the nameless, the infinite, Hashem, Eloheinu, Hashem, God, and you shall love the infinite God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words, these words which I will instruct on your hearts today, these words, the ones, you know, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Eloheinu, Hashem Hechad, these words that God is one, these words that I instruct on your hearts today, you shall teach them to your children. And you shall speak them when you sit in your home, and you shall speak them when you walk on the road, and you shall speak them when you lie down and when you rise up, and you shall... Whoop, does it say, and you shall tie them as a symbol on your hands, and they shall be placed between your eyes, so that's tefillin, right, the wrapping around your hands and placing it between your eyes, you shall tie them as a symbol on your hands, and they shall be placed between your eyes, and you shall write them on your doorposts of your house and, of, and on your gates, that's the mezuzah, you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, okay, so, to summarize that, it says, first you say the Shema, God is one. And then you say, you're going to love this God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might, right? So here, let me take a step back for a moment. I believe that this prayer is, is, is the essence of the genome of the Hebrew tradition, right? That's, that's the the argument I'm going to be laying out here is that the Via Hafta provides the core kernel of Judaism and therefore it acts as a kind of genome. So what do I mean by that? Well, first there's this prayer that's repeated all the time, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elohim, Hashem Echad. And then there's instructions on what to do with the prayer. So first instruction, you shall love this infinite God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. So the first instruction is to love. What's the second instruction? The second instruction is these words, which I have instructed on your hearts. Those words, all these words that I'm saying, you shall teach them to your children. Copy me. Copy me. Repeat me. You will say these words when you're on the road, and you'll say them when you're at home. And you're going to tie them to your brow and wrap them around your eyes and write them on your doorposts and on your gates and write them over your bed when you sleep at night. You are going to record these words and put them on YouTube every day for the rest of your life. That's what Yahweh says. I have to do it. <laughs> you're going to repeat these words and you're going to repeat them and repeat them because that's what you need to do with them because just saying them once wouldn't cut it because they wouldn't mean anything then right that was the thing i said in the very beginning i think that that meaning is produced via repetition so i think that point might be a little clearer now now that i've translated this prayer why repetition creates meaning it's because the actual meaning we're trying to get at that God is one cannot be gotten at unless it's repeated. Unless you see that all of the different instances, every single single example of a thing 
is actually the same thing, right? If you don't have many repetitions, how would you know that's true? Right? And so another way of looking at repetition is is to say that like we we seek to recognize that the entire universe is a repetition, that that each each part of the universe is in some way a representation of all of the other parts and that all of the parts are are in some sense the same. I don't know how to explain this. I want to very hard. <laughs> I'm going to spend the rest of my life trying to explain this and and that to answer the first question I raised. That is why why I'm doing this YouTube channel because I don't think I will understand it until I repeat it over and over and over again. So what I said in the first video of this series is that I believe that meaning is made through repetition. And but it's not just that, it's also that I think that what meaning is is identity, that meaning is self and therefore self is made through repetition. Um, and then I said that this idea gets complicated because I want to ground it in biology. I want to talk about genomes. And so I've just begun to talk about genomes a little bit here, right? I made this claim that the Via Hafta is the genome of Judaism in some sense. Um, so so let, me, let me try to unpack that a little bit. Um, there's this thing, well, except I'm going to, I'm going to unpack that in, in another video because we're, we're moving into biology. So let me, I'll just summarize this video so that we can be done with it. As I just talked about what the Via Hafta means and the Via Hafta basically means that you should take this profound statement, Yahweh Echad, and you should repeat it infinitely. And if you do so, then you will be a good Jew. There's all of these prescript, you know, you're supposed to say it, it's supposed to be the last thing you say when you die, and um, it's probably the last thing Jesus said when he died, probably. So that's interesting. I say this prayer and I'm saying Jesus' last words. Um, yeah, so that's what the Via Hafta means. And now I'm going to give it a biosemiotic um, interpretation about, about what that means for Judaism as, a, as an organism. Yeah, okay, see you soon.